In this video, we're going to be using the law of cosines. We'll be using the law of cosines to solve two specific examples, one where we're given three sides of an oblique triangle, and one where we're given two sides and the angle in between the two sides. Here is an oblique triangle. I'm going to use an obtuse oblique triangle this time. Again, the same formulas work for acute oblique triangles. This time we're going to get three sides and no angles. We were not able to solve this using the law of sines, so instead we're going to rely on the law of cosines. Let's first look at angle B. Which of these three formulas do you think I should use? Well, if I'm looking for that angle B, then I'm going to need to use this equation. And I'll start off by filling in what I know. I know the length of the side B, that's 25, a is 18, again we're going to the side across from the angle, side C is length 12, and what we're looking for is cosine of B, we're looking for that B. If I do a little bit of math, and do a little bit more, and yet more, alright, I get down to negative 0.3634 equaling cosine of B, again I don't want cosine of B, I want to find out what the angle B is. So I'm going to have to rely again on my inverse cosine function. So if I use my calculator, again watch my mode, and I find the inverse cosine of negative 0.3634 is 111.31 degrees. And I'll put that into my triangle. Now at this point I could continue using my law of cosines, but you notice there was a heck of a lot more in terms of calculations than my law of sines. So now that I have this angle, I have a side, a side, and an angle. So now that I've gotten that angle, I'm going to go back to my law of sine. I'm going to find angle C next, so I'll use sine B over B, because I know the angle B and I know the side B. I know the side C, but not the angle C. So now if I set this up, this should all be review at this point. See, I'll multiply both sides by 12, so I can find that sine of C is equal to all of this. Using my calculator, I get the sine of C equaling 0 0.4472. Again, I'll use my inverse sine function, so I can get that angle C equaling 26.56 degrees, and I'll put that in my triangle. Now I need to find that last angle. I'm going to go through this much faster because, well, at this point, using the law of sines should be pretty familiar. I'll fill in my known values. I find that sine of A is equal to 0 0.6708. Using the inverse sine function, I find that my angle A is simply equal to 42.13 degrees, and I'll put that in my triangle. And remember, after you've gone through all this, a good way to check your work is to see if the three angles you've come up with add up to 180 degrees, and they do in this case. You can also check to make sure that the longest side is across from the largest angle, and that the smallest angle has across from it the smallest side, just to be sure that you've done everything correctly. Alright, one final example. If I give you two sides in the angle in between that is an SAS form, I wasn't able to use the law of sines, so let's use the law of cosines. And let's give this example. I have length of side C is 24, I have length of side A is 32, and angle B equaling 115 degrees. Which of my three equations am I going to use? Well, actually, I think I could use any of these because if I look at my first equation, I know A, B, C, I don't know angle A, so I could use that first equation to solve for A. If I looked at the third equation, again I know all those values, and I could use that to find the angle C. But I think the easiest thing for me to do is to use the second equation. And that's because what I'm trying to find in the second equation is just B, the side B. Rather than having to bother with the inverse cosine, I can just find the cosine of 115 degrees and find the length of the side B. So let's do that. Alright, using this equation, I'm filling in my values for A, 32, C, 24, and the angle B, which is 115 degrees. Use my calculator to find some values. Now watch this, remember cosine of 115 degrees, that would be in quadrant 2, 
and I know cosine is negative in quadrant 2, so I end up subtracting a negative number, so be careful of things like that. Finally, I get b squared equaling 3,349, or b approximately equaling 47. Now that I have that third side, I can come up with an SSA arrangement, either 47, 32, and 115 degrees, or 47, 24, and 115 degrees. That's a side-side angle, and I can use a law of sines to do that. I'm not going to go through using the law of sines, but I am going to give you the answers in case you'd like to do the work on your own. Now notice, when I add up these three angles, I actually have 181 degrees, but that's due to the fact I've rounded to the nearest whole degree. So don't panic if you get 179 or 181. Now if I had added up these angles and gotten 224, I know something would have been wrong. So we finally have gotten to use our law of cosines for two specific examples, the side-side-side format and the side-angle-side. We usually only use the law of cosines once and then switch to the easier and less computationally complex law of cosines.